DeSanto Propane is four generations strong as a trustworthy family-owned business with unmatched customer service. Go online at DeSantoPropane.com for more info or call toll-free at 1-800-752-4574 today. Since 1937, the difference has been DeSanto Propane. Do you want to know what's happening in the Finger Lakes? We do, too. We're going in-depth with decision makers in the heart of upstate New York to get the answers you need. From the team of FingerLakes1.com, this is Inside the FLX. All right, welcome back to Inside the FLX. I am joined this morning by Cougar County Sheriff Brian Skank for our monthly chat. Sheriff, welcome back to the program. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Josh. It's great to be back. So uh, let's pick up, unfortunately, where we left off last month. We were talking about road safety. Uh, State police still investigating a fatal work zone crash in Aurelius last week. Uh, It's the second fatal work zone incident in just about, I'd say, 10 or 12 days, unfortunately. The other one happening uh, up here in my neck of the woods in Monroe County on the uh, thruway. What's your message to folks uh, as they hit the road here, especially given that, you know, we're now six or seven days away from uh, the Memorial Day travel buzz? Sure. My primary message is to to obey the traffic law, slow down, uh, don't get distracted, put the cell phone down. Uh, a lot of these incidents, unfortunately, where you're seeing, you know, tragic accidents on our roadways are caused by increased speed or driver inattention. The, you know, those are the pri- primary reasons. So just uh, please slow down, give yourself extra time and, and make sure that you're paying attention to the rules of the road. And we've been really working hard this year to spread that message of sharing the road and slowing down when it comes to construction zones, when it comes to farm equipment, when it comes to bicyclists and pedestrians, uh, horses and buggies, motorcycles, you know, we're really working hard to try to, um, you know, get that message out there that pay attention, slow down before something tragic happens. We don't, we don't want to see, we certainly don't want to see any more tragedies. And unfortunately, we will continue to see them, but hopefully we can have a positive impact and, and reduce the number of those by just getting that message out there to pay attention to the rules of the road. Uh, you know, the the feedback that we we hear from readers uh, after stories like those from the last couple of weeks is why aren't law enforcement, why don't cops write more tickets? Why don't deputies write more tickets? Um, it seems to be too widespread a problem to really like enforce your way out of it. It, it seems like it really would take a behavioral change. Is that what you guys see on, on your end of it too? Absolutely. And the undersheriff here at Cuba County and I were just talking this morning about just how many traffic uh, requests we get to to enforce the laws. You know, people calling us and saying, you know, we're seeing many speeders on our roads or individuals running stop signs near my home or, you know, the aggressive driving. And it it is everywhere, unfortunately, and it it is very overwhelming. Um, You know, traffic enforcement is important, but, uh, you know, in full transparency, law enforcement can't do this alone. We can't. We can't enforce every location throughout our, our communities. It is going to take a change in behavior. It is going to t- take some hard work with prevention strategies. And this is a problem that our that our all of our communities own. We all have to be part of the solution. Spread that message to slow down, obey the rules of the road, uh, combined with the traffic enforcement. But certainly, this is a much bigger problem than just uh, law enforcement can can solve alone. We saw the state uh, tinker with it a little bit last year. Um, you think cameras become part of that enforcement effort in work zones specifically, eventually? Possibly. I, I wish that we had the resources to put a patrol car in every work zone. Um, I know you do see those on some uh, you know, state highways and especially in other states. We don't have the resources to do that, nor do our law enforcement partners. But you know, maybe that will be uh, something that's going to need to be done because I've traveled through work zones uh, myself, both while on duty and off. And, you know, I've just seen how fast people still continue to drive through them. Um, And, you know, we do have to look at that and as these tragedies continue to happen and see if there are ways that maybe utilizing technology, we can we can curb that problem. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's get into some uh, uh, better news here. Uh, yesterday, your team welcomed Brownie from the Finger Lakes SPCA as part of an interesting program. Uh, tell us about it. We did. So so the SPCA here locally in Auburn just kicked off this program. It's an initiative to 
uh, get animals out into the community with the hopes of finding them some forever homes. And it's a program they just kicked off and we were happy to be one of the first uh, agencies to welcome uh, a dog. Uh, we bought, brought Brownie in for the day. Brownie was a canine deputy for a day. We gave Brownie a badge and uh, she hung around here with us uh, most of the afternoon. So she was a big hit, um, really nice dog that, you know, I'm hoping she finds her forever home. But the uh, anyone in the community that would like to participate in that program is welcome to reach out to the Finger Lakes SPCA and uh, they make it real easy. They drop the they'll drop the uh, the animal off to you and give you some direction and help you um, with that process and uh, with the goal of getting some exposure and and finding these animals some homes. So we're uh, we're really happy to do it. I have a a goal to continue with this program, but I would like to at some point. Um, be able to get some of these animals into our jail, um, into some of our pods to spend some time with our incarcerated population. To I think there, there'd be many benefits, not only for the dog, to get the dog out of the kennel uh, for a day, but for our incarcerated population to, to have that uh, animal there to work with and maybe do a little bit of training and help prepare them for their forever homes. But that's one of my long-term goals. I've been working with the SBCA on that and more to come. Hopefully we can make that happen. We, we've heard stories of that uh, being pretty effective in other communities around the region. Is that something you've talked with other uh, sheriffs around around uh, upstate New York about? I have. I know in a, within your listening area, I think Ontario County, the yeah. sheriff's office there has a program similar to that. Um, it's been very popular there and worked well for them. And it's something we we have looked at for a while. We'd like to we'd like to copy that because if it's working there, it will certainly work here. So we'd like to explore that. I think it's a win win for everybody involved. Definitely. All right. So uh, it's National Police Week. Uh, so we've seen lots of commemorative efforts uh, from agencies across the board here in central New York and the Finger Lakes. Uh, what's on your mind this time of year? Obviously, you're talking about a lot of things with a lot of groups of people who uh, probably don't hear about some of the issues that you guys face every single day and talk about throughout the entire year. So what do you like to really focus on uh, spotlighting during a time like this? So during this week, during National Police Week, I love to focus on our staff and the great work that our law enforcement uh, members are doing here for our sheriff's office and, and with our partner agencies beyond. Uh, but more importantly, the week is set up to honor those that have been lost in the line of duty and, you know, we've had some difficult losses here in, in, in the state of New York this year and certainly across the country. But, um, you know, we also had a loss of our own here in, in August of 2019 with former Under Sheriff Steve McLeod, who passed away as a result of uh, cancer he developed um, after responding to the cleanup efforts um, after the terror attacks in New York City. So, um, you know, that's considered a line of duty death. And we remember uh, under Sheriff McLeod each year during this time. But, you know, it's really to focus on those that have lost their their life and to certainly highlight the great work being done by our police officers, our deputies out there every day. Absolutely. Uh, recently, your, uh, your team was part of a uh, three-day course on behavioral threat assessment and management. Uh, that was over at Cuga Community College. Uh, what's the goal of a, of a program like this? So our goal, and we've really been uh, pushing to be a leader in our community to bring this training here and to bring this process here, but the goal is to prevent violence in our community. Uh, we are working very hard right now with some community partners, including Cuga County Mental Health, Cuga County Department of S Social Services, uh, with Cuga centers here locally, um, and some of our partner agencies, including the Auburn Police Department, to take a look at cases where individuals who are going down a potential pathway of violence, who are suffering from mental health concerns or things that might lead them in that direction. Our goal is to intervene before it gets to that point. Uh, so we're really working hard to bring some training here uh, to learn how to interject um, and to stop these types of things before they happen. So our goal is to take a proactive response rather than a reactive response. We want to prevent prevent violence, potential violence in our schools, violence in our communities. Um, you know, we knock on wood, hope we never have uh, a headline incident that occurs in our community, but I think it's incumbent upon us more than ever uh, to make sure that we're doing everything we can proactively to prevent uh, that type of behavior here. So um, we had some great training. Uh, most every school district in Cuga County was represented uh, at the training, as well as uh, Cuga County Mental Health, a number of social workers from other 
organizations and law enforcement members from the Auburn Police Department and uh, our Sheriff's Office. It was a great three-day training provided by the state. Um, and we've got some more tools in our toolbox to help prevent violence in our community. But, you know, law enforcement, that, that always hasn't been a, a focus of ours, trying to prevent crime as much as reacting uh, to crime and violence. Uh, we're trying to change that a little bit. And let's take a, you know, let's take a more preventative approach. And we're trying to make sure that we do that. And there's nothing more important than preventing violence. Um, so that's that's what we're trying to accomplish. I feel very good about the direction that we're going with that initiative. A lot of that is is connecting folks to services, right? Uh, services that already exist within the community outside of the law enforcement spectrum, right? It absolutely is. And we've already seen some success in the work that we've done. We've had individuals, um, even within our schools, school students who have made some very serious threats, um, who've been uh, caught doing some things that are very concerning when it comes to this issue. And we've been able to redirect them um, with the services, working in a multidisciplinary way with all of our agencies, our goal is, you know, we, we want to get this person on the right path. Not only do we want to prevent the violence, we want this person to lead a healthy, productive life. And uh, so that is the goal. We, we get them uh, the services that they need here locally and, um, you know, hopefully prevent a tragedy and hopefully help them help them get to a better place. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, May is also Motorcycle Safety Awareness Month. We talked about road safety off the top here. Uh, the weather, of course, is getting nice. I've seen a lot more motorcycles out on the road in the last week or so. Um, as we head into summer, what are some of the, the top concerns that, that you see as, as issues for motorcyclists? Uh, obviously, your department responds to a lot of motorcycle accidents. So, so what do you see as those uh, bigger ticket concerns heading into summer? We do. And as I mentioned a moment ago, following the rules of the road and not only for the motorcyclists, but, you know, people that are driving around people that are on motorcycles, you know, obeying the speed limits, paying attention. Uh, we, when you're getting to an intersection, you know, look, look twice, save a life. I know that's a campaign that's very popular out there, but, you know, it's there's a lot to it. You know, if you're in a hurry and you fly through that intersection without really paying attention, uh, you might miss that motorcyclist that's that's coming down the road and and we want we want to prevent those types of tragedies so slow down pay attention follow the rules of the road as i mentioned before uh, another big issue uh cut grass on the road i see this and you know we do our best to en enforce it but it, that can be difficult but if you're mowing heavy uh wet grass or, or placing anything out on the roadway mud uh, from a farm vehicle or anything like that that can be very dangerous certainly to somebody on a motorcycle so we it is against the law to place anything on the the roadway that can potentially cause an accident and there's no excuse there's no need to blow you know wet grass onto the road or if you do make sure you remove it you know immediately blow it back off the road um, so we're partnering this year with a, our local chapter of abate american bikers aimed at uh, uh, towards education uh, we're working with them to try to just get some information out on social media about some of these things and, again, to prevent uh, accidents and hopefully allow everybody to use our roadways safely. Absolutely. Love to see it. Uh, you guys, you actually had a couple of recent graduations from BASIC. Uh, talk to us about the path uh, a recruit would go from uh, – entry into a program like that, and then graduation, and then when they're actually either in corrections or out on the road? Sure. So actually, uh, we, we recently graduated uh, two custody members from the Seneca County Sheriff's uh, Academy for, for custody officers for jailers, and they did a great job. We appreciate our partnership with Sheriff Thompson and the Seneca County Sheriff's Office. A number of other sheriffs also graduated some folks from there. But as far as the, the path, um, we're actually able to hire uh, individuals and plug them into our jail even before they go to the academy, which we do from time to time. Um, they do have to complete an academy within a year of hire. Um, and given the uh, the recruiting environment out there, if we can hire somebody and plug them in right away, we do. We don't want to yeah. wait until the academy becomes available. But we have been plugging people into our jail, providing some training for them here. And then when an academy becomes available, uh, we send them to, uh, it's about a 12-week academy. Uh, they go through the academy and they, they come back. But personally, I like giving them some experience in the facility before they go to the academy. I think um, if they go to the academy right out of the gate, they don't have as good of an understanding about how things work in operations within the facility. But having a little bit of prior experience, I think the training um, is easier for them to relate to. I think they get more out of it. 
Um, but yeah, we've uh, we've been doing great um, with uh, some recent recruits that we've had. Um, the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office uh, recently assisted us with uh, with uh, some recruits and some training, and we've held our own academy here from time to time where we partner with other agencies. But um, it can be a pretty difficult process, but uh, very rewarding when you get through it and and get plugged into the into the position. Overall, where do you guys stand st- uh, staffing wise? Staffing wise, uh, we're actually things are looking a little bit brighter. We are down 10 individuals in the jail. However, it looks like we've got three solid candidates coming on. Um, So I'm excited about that. Uh, Our road patrol division, we're just down one, I'm happy to say. So we're doing great on the road. Um, Things are looking up a little bit on the jail side of the house. And I think our other law enforcement partners out there are seeing kind of a similar trend. So let's hope that that pendulum keeps swinging and we can keep uh, getting these positions filled because they're great careers. Um, you know, I know we've had some negative, negative press out there over the last few years that I think has, you know, uh, impacted our ability to hire people and see people come this way, but we're seeing more people explore um, these, these career paths. And I'm really glad to see it because, you know, I can say after almost 27 years that this has been an awesome career and I would do it all over again in a second if I had to make that choice. Absolutely. Uh, Okay. So you mentioned road patrol. Uh, They are now equipped with AEDs. Uh, I think a lot of people are getting more accustomed to seeing these in all sorts of different places. Uh, What is the training that goes along with that? And how long of a process was that actually getting those deployed uh, in the cruisers? So we we actually did have a few out there. We've had a few out there for a while and we've had actually some some utilization of them and, and some good saves. But um, we recently deployed additional AEDs, and it looks like we're going to have one deployed in every single patrol car uh, and assigned to every single member out there. And given the uh, the the uses that we've had so far and the positivity of of that being out there, you know, I, I wanted to get one in every car. Yeah. Um, when our deputies hear, you know, an EMS call go out for somebody that might be unresponsive, um, they're responding. And there are many times when our our cars are getting there before you know, an ambulance or um, fire departments or emergency medical services. So they have been a great tool. Um, We provide the training in house. Um, The training's not uh, not too complicated. We're able to provide the training on how to utilize the the AED. And they're really pretty simple to use. So, you know, anybody that has potential access to one out there, um, I would highly recommend get the training, you know, get get CPR trained, go through the first aid training. Um, because you you can really make a huge difference and save someone's life uh, by being able to utilize uh, the AED or provide that that first responder uh, response for somebody that needs the help. Yeah, every minute counts. I, I'm curious, um, it, why don't you think it is universal across the board in upstate New York that AEDs aren't in every patrol car at all agencies? Because we see this the theme, you mentioned EMS, uh, and ambulance services, uh, they're, they're shorthanded across the board. Um, why don't you think we, we've seen AEDs deployed everywhere by now? Well, I think probably cost is one factor. Um, you know, I, I've, uh, I had to be creative in, in finding funding to do this, but our legislature uh, this last round was very supportive. I did put in this year's budget to purchase a number of them to add units, and they supported that. And I think partly because just as you said, the response times and uh, the lack of volunteers out there in our rural areas, um, it has been more and more difficult uh, to to get those EMS responses to people that need it. But I think it is critical for our our deputies and police officers out there to have that training and to have those tools available given, you know, the lack of resources out there for EMS and more so in a rural area than than uh, you know an urban area because we're out there where it, it can take a long time for somebody in our community to get an ambulance. So, you know, it'd be great if everybody or every law enforcement uh, vehicle had those, but uh, you know there are some challenges that that certainly prohibit that. But hopefully, hopefully they can be overcome by different agencies and maybe they can move in that direction as well. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, maybe someday. Uh, Mock DWI crash event happened last month toward the end. Uh, how'd it go? What's the reception typically to these types of events? Went very well. It was uh, put on at the Auburn High School right here in the city of Auburn. A uh, number of our partner agencies had a hand in uh, planning that. Um, 
as well as uh, the SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions. At the SAD group at Auburn High was uh, instrumental in making sure that that happened. But we put on a mock accident. Uh, we staged uh, what looked like an accident in the parking lot with you know, cars that were two cars that were literally smashed up. We had uh, actors that portrayed uh, victims in the crash. Uh, one of the individuals was uh, acting, you know, who allegedly had caused the the mock accident by being under the influence of alcohol. Um, there was uh, field tests, field sobriety tests, and arrest made. Um, and we even had uh, a coroner's response because uh, in the incident we staged that there were deaths involved. But a number of students from Auburn and Union Springs, Cato School Districts, and Southern Cuga even bust students in to see this mock DWI and and to hear about, you know, it was actually narrated through the process about what was going on and why. I think it was very impactful for the students to to see what, you know, a destructive decision uh, can, what kind of consequence can come from that. Um, and watching the students, I was there, I think that they really uh, did pay attention and really thought about, you know, hey, what happens if I make that decision to, to use a substance or alcohol and get behind the wheel? And again, another preventative uh, strategy we're trying to, to, to work on to prevent a serious tragedy that could happen. So I think it was very, very well received. I think it did have an impact and it's hard to measure, you know, what we prevent, but I, I, I feel confident that we are preventing potential tragedies by the work that we're doing with these things. Absolutely. Uh, grateful for your service to the community, Sheriff, uh, and of course, your time here. Uh, as always, we will be talking to you next month. Absolutely. And I'm grateful for the opportunities each month. Thank you so much, Josh.